I'll say it now and forever hold my peace, because at this rate, every game is beautiful to me. Even before this game is ported to PC, it was drop dead gorgeous. One of the prettiest games to come from this generation. Rost is hair and beard goals, and that is indisputable. Who turned their backs on the goddess, but their wickedness doomed them. I love seeing the results of the old world's wickedness as Ross speaks of it. This is how you do exposition in an engaging way. I'll make it quick. The resolution as he crests the mountain is beautiful. Aloy has got to be the best behaved baby I have ever seen in my life. I'm a grown man who'd be crying in that cold. Hi, Matriarch Tirsa. Matriarch Tirsa. Like Mother Teresa? The name is perfectly suited to her character. Also, the way this game utilizes names is a wonderful thing. More on that later. I am a high matriarch, Rost. Aloy! Hmm. This seems really familiar, but I can't seem to put my finger on just what it could be. And wherever you go, I will follow. A damning promise. Oh, whoa! We're in the menu. Even from a young age, Aloy is outperforming her peers. She's an outcast to be shunned. Oh. Poor Aloy. Why is this a win, you may ask? Anything that pulls the heartstrings is a win. Bost lingering, watching Aloy is a sad moment. He doesn't understand why he can't interact with her. Prejudice is a learned trait, and it's not until the Nora mother teaches him this that Bast exhibits this behavior. A moment that will save the world. Again. Show me. Show me again. Hi. Hi. This is so cute and endearing. I don't want to think Ross is not a loving caretaker, but I'm sure he doesn't wish her a warm happy birthday like this. What is that on your face? Nothing. Did you find it down there? No. Ava Potter does an awesome job delivering these lines of a little kid trying to lie. Who's that? Ignore him. The contempt in Ross's voice with that delivery. He follows the laws of the Nora, but is not happy about Teb's presence. That I can see the paths they take. Stop telling stories. Okay, Boomer. I'm sorry for that one. Aloy doesn't hesitate to save Teb. It's like it's in her nature or something. They are outcasts both. And she is motherless. The man says this in Rost's face and takes care not to speak to him, but to Teb. <laughs> Bosch should have known from this moment he wasn't beating her in the proving. These giddy movements of Aloy's excitement. Animators are actors too. Aloy's conviction to rise on her own. I love how much we learn of her character through her actions, and not what she says or is said about her. Are those goosebumps on my arm? Those are goosebumps. I'm so happy that we're getting more representation in gaming. Redheads have received the shaft for too long. First Aloy, then Cal. I like it. In all seriousness, I'm so glad that we're getting more female protagonists, and not just gaming, but all of our entertainment media. Rost's restraint. He knew Aloy could handle it but was ready nonetheless. Look at Aloy's arms. This woman is ripped, and in a pretty realistic fashion. If you hadn't destroyed the Sawtooth, how many braves might it have killed or injured tomorrow? This small story of Aloy and the Sawtooth is a parallel to the entire story and themes of the game. You've lived in isolation long enough. Not until now I didn't. Ugh, that one hit like a freight train. Aloy approaches Ross similar to the way she did when she was a kid. The child in her can't let go of her father figure. The 13th Sun King was a murderous bum. Playing to your audience. I mean, you're smart. You're obviously capable. And, well, I mean, look at you. Uh, what are you talking about? Our boy Aaron looking to slide in that focus network. Aloy's never interacted with just about anyone before. And I doubt her father ever flirted with her. So she is genuinely confused about his intentions. Always best to make every day count. Not that I think she took his advice directly, but does she ever? Mother is chuff. What did you say? This is the bed house? With you standing guard? I figured it was the latrine. So glad Aloy never plays the victim. She's determined and headstrong. The motherless outcast. You've still got a scar from where that rock I threw hit you. I like that boss is a super stereotypical bully. Why? Because Aloy doesn't take any of his smack. Are you gonna shut your mouth? Because that would be a surprise. Very cathartic to watch. I plan to be well rested when I run you into the ground tomorrow. She's cocky, but at least she's nice about it. What a gentleman Bost can be. Getting a close look at a Horus unit. I love that the game doesn't make a deal of it. Yeah, we've got a huge machine and we aren't gonna explain it now. So what? Every time Aloy does this, it's a flex. I'm sad to see him go as he was more human in his last moments. 
But what goes around comes around, boss. Originally, this was the moment Aloy would first get her focus. It was a better call to put it in earlier. Keeping a promise. Self-sacrifice. You'll be missed, Big Papa Rost. Was that a corrupter tail I just saw? In the moment, I thought it was a scorpion machine. Boy, was I wrong. I've held off long enough. Aloy's hair is fantastic. I can't imagine how much time that's got to take in the morning. I love this outfit, and I wish so, so bad that it was wearable in the game. The Great Chamber where all mother slew the metal devil and gave birth to you. This game is one of the most unique IPs I've played this generation. The world building is magnificent. Of course people would worship the robot door surrounded by a dead Horus unit that tried to penetrate her. People will ascribe meaning to things they don't understand, such as the door and the machines. This is just one small example of the depth they went into creating this wholly new world. To show you where you were born and loose you, let me do the talking. Tursa has always had Aloy's back from day one. Closest thing she might have to a grandma. I've been anointed a seeker. Have Tissa and Jezza gone insane? Rush didn't mention Lancer as he knows how much she hates Aloy. Think they have a club about it? Just one scarab takes so much to take down. Sure, we are using bow and arrows, but you can see their destructive power. Now imagine over half a billion of them. Every time I think of the Pharaoh play, it's horrifying. Didn't expect to be riding machines at all, but god am I glad we can. Fingers crossed for Thunderjaws and Stormbirds to be rideable in Forbidden West. Are there any places he frequents, places he returns to? A house, here in Meridian. We don't start at a pub or a park, just jump straight to his house. Yeah, Aaron, I'm sure he frequents his house often. Getting to the point. Oh. That was subtle. You want to talk about subtlety, Aloy? That's a vault hatch of Azaram make. Nothing gets through. We'll see about that. Again, I just want to praise the animators. Some of these reactions are just too good. Serve and they live. Disobey and I will open their throats. Adding layers to our antagonists. These bullet necklaces are super cool. That is all. I won't beg for my life. Good on him for facing his death head on. He may be a weak man, but he's no coward. The Kopesh is the perfect icing to the Scarab cake. You've got the fastest, quick, Zerg-like front line with the Scarab and the heavy-duty guns of the Kopesh supporting them from behind. If it were just these two, it makes sense why humanity fell so quickly. The Entity lives. I like that the creators of Zero Dawn felt the need to give Hades a guttural, terrifying voice. Or at least, Horus units had that voice. As it's that in which Hades sought refuge. Dr. Sarbag, you are 355,510 days out of the day for your meeting with Mr. Fairy. Here's step one to our mystery finally being revealed. This slow unraveling of the Old One's story is so fascinating to me. Where's your legal team, Ted? Using Ashley Birch for Elizabeth II is a nice way to build entry. Or confirm a creeping suspicion we already had. It's not bad, Ted. It's apocalyptic. One thread at a time they pull. I don't know what they did, but every time there's a hologram of the old ones, I'm on the edge of my seat, hanging on every word. Learning about history has never been more fun. Project Zero Dawn. Hey, that's the game we're playing. Sign it, I can't sign that. Yes, you can. Sign or don't sign, and everyone else on this planet knows the real cause of the glitch. Ted, signing these papers is important to a decision he makes later. He doesn't want people to know the Pharaoh Plague was his fault. All this searching and I'm still no closer. That's your reaction to everything you've just learned? To whine like a spoiled child? Silence never misses an opportunity to belittle Aloy's questions and concerns to coerce her into a more pragmatic approach. Never stopping to reflect how a new revelation makes him feel. You just don't understand. It's not that I don't understand, Aloy. It's that I don't care. Silence would be awful at job interviews. Of course I am. Then why are you still standing here? You're insufferable, you know that? <laughs> I agree, Aloy. Someday we'll meet in person, and your manners had better be improved. This is why I believe speaking things into existence. The two times she does see him, he's marginally better. The planet Earth, Aloy. It's not flat like you thought. Damn, not even a fictional game can escape flat earthers. Why would I think that? During eclipses, the shadow cast on the moon is curved. But I'm glad our leading lady isn't such a fool. The eclipse. Whoa. Our first look at a Horus unit. Like I was talking about earlier, the Scarab and the Kopesh were already enough. But now the Horus? 
I'm in awe that there is a record of Enduring Victory taking one down. It's stated that there were thousands of Horus units by the end of the plague. Now Pharaoh, he'll foot the bill, but his money can't buy the time necessary to complete Zero Dawn. That, that can only be paid for in blood. We'd be throwing civilians into a meat grinder! Jesus Christ. I've mentioned this before. The Pharaoh Plague has got to be one of the scariest apocalypse events I've heard of in fiction. The hopelessness and bleakness of their efforts, even though they don't know it. I couldn't imagine what it was like on the front lines, and I hope we get to see more of it in the Forbidden West. If you pay close attention, you can see Elizabeth's head hanging in sorrow. It's not the best solution, just the only one. Tall necks are so beautiful. Definitely the most majestic of the machines. Remember when Assaultooth was our first tough fight and a test of our skill? Now look at us. Just staring one down like Thor waiting to hammer Hulk in the helicarrier. Give me some time to make an approach. If I end up alerting them, open fire. I appreciate the devs give us a chance to be stealthy in these attack a camp scenarios. These buildings have been in disarray for over a millennia, and I love that they just look like skeletons. Here, Devil's Thirst, is our first two looks at what happened to the Old One cities, and it's kind of beautiful. Grafted into the top of its disc, you find a module of sorts. Silence, subtle head nod while using the word module. Animators are actors. I won't deny I risked your life, but it was the only way. Pragmatic and honest. Seems exhausting to be around, but he's consistent. I command Lucian's Bahavas to speak in my behalf. At least he's not sucking on his mama's titty. I won't tolerate whining. Is that clear? You'll tolerate what I give you, Silence. Aloy never puts up with anyone's BS. Hey! Elizabeth so back here! Requesting access! Aloy is getting better at using the old world's tech. Like mother, like daughter? Nothing can. Its robots will continue to replicate and devour the biosphere. Life on Earth will be destroyed. Here's when what the hell happened to the old world comes into focus. I love that they went mystery versus an exposition prequel prologue. To buy time for you and the work you will do here. Also, Harris is talking to people who will be working on Zero Dawn, but in a way, he is telling that directly to Aloy. I hope comfortable clothes like Elizabeth's here becomes standard in the future for business. Project Zero Dawn. To create a super intelligent, fully automated terraforming system. Huge credits to John Gonzalez and Ben McCaw. They came up with this brilliant story for us to enjoy. It would need a true AI, an immortal guardian. The entire concept of Zero Dawn is the coolest thing ever. An AI that can feel and make choices based on what life needs according to her, not a spreadsheet. In addition to Gaia, the will of those who created Zero Dawn, knowing they will never see the fruits of their labor. I couldn't imagine anything harder to do than that. Interesting that a lot of the Old World characters in Pharaoh Robots derive so much of their namesakes from Egyptian mythology, but went for a Greco-Roman naming scheme when it came to Zero Dawn. Our purpose is to empower Gaia to build the robots, and not just build, imagine, from scratch. Any robot she needs for any conceivable purpose. Amazing that the pitch of hunting robots blossomed into this game. And here's our reasoning. Everything is explained and they keep you hooked, wanting to know more. Welcome to Hades. Zero Dawn's extinction failsafe protocol. I wonder if Hades ever had to be used, and it's just not been mentioned anywhere because there's no need for Guy to relay it. Maybe she was embarrassed. Our activities and initiatives will comply with the 2034 clone provisions and the 2048 rally accords. Even when the world is ending, they have to adhere to laws. Sounds about right. Look at that shave! Looks like my shave, if not better. And I've got modern tools. Aloy must have been an ensemble in a theater production with that quick change. Silence to the rescue! Happy birthday, Isaac. Daddy sure does love his little big man. Callback. I was needlessly cruel. For your sake, I hope there is someone waiting there for you inside the mountain. Hey, Aloy was right. Your manners have better improved. Have you returned to speak with the goddess, Aloy? Um... Yes, I guess you could say that. Aloy smartly plays to the religion instead of trying to explain the truth to them. Smart move on her part. What if she has come to wake her father, the metal devil? Oh, the irony. I never had a mother. What are you talking about? You had two, a dead woman and a machine. Aloy finally learns who her mother is, even if it's not what she expected. And Silence is being his assertive, uncensored self, but in a sort of uplifting way. 
Notice Lancer is the first to bow down to Aloy. No, 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 Anointed no, 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 of the Nora! Up! First you shun me, now this- I like the subversion. All her life she wanted to be accepted, but now she understands the bigger picture. Just like Sobek, she wants to empower her people. This is a beautiful look at Gaia Prime. It never occurred to me that the way through would not be with force, but with a key. The failure of imagination was mine, not yours. Silence admitting his faults. Character growth. Gaia Prime's port seals were designed to close with a seam of less than two millimeters. But this one closed with a 10 millimeter gap, enough for the swarm to detect this facility. Everything has been on such a large scale, the Pharaoh Plague, Zero Dawn, Enduring Victory, but it all came down to eight millimeters. You hear that? That's our girl Aloy's theme coming in. Okay, everyone. I've repaired the seal. Self-sacrifice. Guys, you know me, I'm... I'm not good at endings. Of course she's not good at endings. Both of Aloy's mothers self-sacrificed to save life on Earth. This could definitely have foreshadowed a more sad ending. She knew it wasn't enough for Gaia to think. She taught Gaia to feel. Hey, Aloy figured out the theme of the game. She said she wanted to go home. Maybe. Oh, she's gonna go see Mama. It doesn't need to be like this. It already is, Samina. I did it three minutes ago. I've purged Apollo. It's gone. All of it. Every cup. Ted is a fucking coward. Like Elizabeth said, if you don't remember your history, you're doomed to repeat it. But Pharaoh didn't care about that. He didn't want any of the New World to know about his failure. And to ensure this, he murdered the creators of the New World in cold blood. When the hatch unsealed and scattered their ashes on the wind, it took them out among the world they made. My eyes watering? Try not to fall to your death. The master override doesn't override gravity. Silence knows what gravity is. Maybe not all of Apollo was lost. Uh, you're here. Whoa, he actually showed up. And all this? I leave it to you, of course. As it turned out, it was yours all along. I was merely trespassing. You can't make me feel this much emotion so close together. Perhaps the vanguard, your radiance. Neat. The Sun King is called your radiance. Ah, Aloy. Preparations are underway on the rigid defenses and at the spire. Why does Maraud remind me of Oblivion NPCs? Some came for Meridian, others for shards. But many came for you, by name. People join Aloy to defend the new world just as others did with Elizabeth in the old. Silence? Are you there? I guess I shouldn't ask ghosts for advice. Taking shots at Silence? Of course, main mission should be aptly named, but I feel they knocked it out of the park in this game. Campfires, perhaps? It's good to have hope. And during victory, I'd hope. Probably the most horrifying thing these people have ever seen in their lives. <laughs> Flexing one last time. Right on the king who just tried to... slide into her focus network. Turn your face to the sun. <laughs> Muppins, callback, revenge, redemption. To explain that last one, Aloy uses Silence Spear to kill Helis. Maybe if Enduring Victory had some of these, they would have stood a better chance. Just kidding. This is such a small force of the Chariot Line, and we failed. Imagine millions of these things swarming you like water over filling a cup. I can only imagine that some Horus units were awakened. There's no way we aren't fighting one next game. Aloy! It's Aloy! Well, you, you can see that. Aaron, I love your appreciation for Aloy, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. We thought you'd fallen at the ridge. No, the ridge fell on me. <laughs> Even in the face of extinction, Aloy's got a sense of humor. What did it cost? Every, nothing, really. Mostly good things came out of this choice to stab Hades in the brain. But I love the visual of Elizabeth going to destroy Hades. Okay, I've held off the whole video. The score in this game is breathtaking. Aloy's theme is amazing, and this rousing score is such a great victory lap to cap off our story. Aloy finally gets to meet her mother in the flesh, or... Ash. I would have wanted her to be curious and willful, unstoppable even, but with enough compassion to heal the world. Just a little bit. She got exactly what she wanted. Elizabeth died holding on to the world. All she ever did was hold on during the Pharaoh Plague. Gaia was in control of the terraforming of the planet. She placed this triangle around Elizabeth, encasing this goddess of fertility in her pyramid. Well, 
Let's begin. Are you shitting me, Silence? Did I ever make a mistake waiting so long to play this game? I'm so glad I didn't get anything spoiled for me over the years. Horizon Zero Dawn was seven years in the making. I've never even worked on something longer than three months. The team at Guerrilla were so passionate about this project. Originally, this game was a backup idea. It was a last minute decision by Matthias Dewan, Horizon's director, to switch the pitch from some shooter to Horizon Zero Dawn, and the rest is history. Dewan said that it just felt right to do Horizon, said that the whole team knew it was, that deep down, this is what they wanted. It permeates throughout the whole game how true that rings. Every corner is dripping with lore of this new world. There are always things to discover and learn scattered around. They created a beautiful post-apocalyptic world. How many games can say that? Instead of dark and dreary, they went bright and lush. I remember the first time I was running through the Embrace, wishing that it existed. The environments are so gorgeous and also super varied. We have the snowy mountains of the Nora, the summer sands of the Asaram, the frozen wilds of Bannock, or the wet jungles to the south. These biomes cover the span of Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming. Of course, greatly shrunk down, but still draw inspiration in relevant ways to their real-life counterparts. Everything was created to serve the greater goal of convincing us of this new world. Horizon has a smaller map than its contemporaries at the time, and that's a good thing. They don't have space for space's sake. They put more care into creating a detailed, dense environment to explore. The world is beautiful to look at, but also to experience. Horizon has got to be one of the best original IPs of this generation. All born from the idea of hunting robot animals. The dinosaurs came later. To have this entire game with all of its lore come from such a simple pitch is breathtaking. I know most all games are derived from a simple elevator pitch, but let me have this. From hunting robot dinosaurs all the way to the questions of morality, compassion, and motherhood, I feel like I get to have my cake and eat it too with this game. From the old world to the new, every bit of lore is fascinating. Starting with the armed forces slowly phasing out human soldiers, the Pharaoh play, Gaia's creation in to Zero Dawn, Horizon is able to create two vastly distinct worlds and have it all connect. With the creation of these two worlds, we've got one of my favorite details of the game that I'm going to try and speed through as quickly as I can. The use of Egyptian and Greco-Roman naming schemes. I love it. Pharaoh is a homophone to Pharaoh, and Ted believes himself above everyone. Sobek is one letter from Sobek, the god of the Nile who brought fertility to the land. The chariot line of robots all aptly names Scarab, Kopesh, and Horus. The old world seems to permeate with Egyptian names, but Zero Dawn derives its names from Greco-Roman myth, which came after and was loosely based on the Egyptian myth. So it makes sense that Zero Dawn would follow the scheme of what Cain comes after. There are other great uses of naming such as Rust, close to Rust. Aloy is one letter from Alloy, and I've already mentioned Tursa. I'll spare you on going into detail on why these are brilliant. You can figure that out on your own. Back to those two different worlds. I believe the two elevate this story to such a high bar. We would have been satisfied hunting robo-dinos, but Gorilla went the extra mile to justify their dino's existence. This story is one of the only games to make me tear up since The Last of Us Part 1. Have to make that clear. Horizon Zero Dawn's story works on so many different levels. It works as just a fun romp through Robo Dino Land, an open world collectathon, a rich story with a meaningful message. It's no wonder the game took seven years to create. I want to shoot down the complaints I've heard that the story is nothing but hologram movies for the second half. While that's true, I can't help but think, so what? Even though it was a hollow movie spree, I've got to ask, were you not entertained? I craved those holograms and wanted more and more of them to reveal details about the old world. Through those holograms and data points and the characters of Zero Dawn, Gorilla crafted a beautiful story that actually is trying to say something. Actually make me feel good and not depressed like other. I love what food Horizon brings to thought. The themes of compassion, motherhood, hope, all are so touching and something I feel we could use a bit more in the world today. I feel we can all learn from Horizon's story. It's a cautionary tale as much as it's a story about hope. Horizon tells us to understand that we're all going to fall, but as long as there are people who care, it will be okay. The story and themes aren't anything new to us. Understanding, humility, love, unity, along with the others I mentioned. These are some of the cruxes of all of our feel-good stories, but they just keep coming up again and again. Stories like these will always have a place in our culture. For as hard as we try, we may never be able to create Elysium, so to speak. But as long as we try, we may be able to heal the world. Just a little bit. That's my main takeaway from the game. The Zero Dawn project was created to give life a chance. A chance to try. To try again. And don't we all deserve a second chance?